Uh, and Jonathan, what do you what do you see as the primary issues in the Democratic race now? What what if what are the top two that it'll come down to? Uh, I think it's really going to be about Wall Street mostly, um, with electability as kind of the second issue uh, on Wall Street. Hillary is a little bit exposed because she's taken all of these speaking fees from big Wall Street firms. And I think you'll see Sanders return to that over and over again. But, uh, you know, electability right, is uh, Jonathan, we're going to go to Trump's press conference. It started an hour late. He's taking a couple of questions. Are they to be taken seriously? Are they just whining? No, the National Review is a dying paper. It's got its circulations way down. Uh, not very many people read it anymore. I mean, people don't even think about the National Review. So I guess they want to get a little publicity. But you no, know, that's a dying paper. Really, I mean, it's, one, it's, one of, it's pretty much, I, I got to tell you, Dave, it's pretty much of a dead paper. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump. Yes. What do you think is going on right now in the GOP? You have that National Review piece that just came out. The Washington Post also has a piece tonight saying that the GOP is warming up to you. Are you I think they're lines? warming up. I, I want to be honest. Uh, I have received so many phone calls from people that you would call establishment, from people generally speaking, conservatives, Republicans, that want to come onto our team. Uh, the polls have just come out, as you saw in Iowa, where I'm up by 11 points. Another one came up where I'm up by 10 points. And you look at New Hampshire, you look at South Carolina, you look at uh, Florida, where I have 48, 48 points. I'm way up, uh, way up in every poll. So we are getting calls from everybody that it's it's actually amazing. I'm actually surprised. Mr. Trump, 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 Mr. Trump,
and I think the party can be brought together. Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump I read in September, I read your plan on the Second Amendment. I like every word of it, but it doesn't square with some of your past positions. When did that sea change happen and well, I why? Think it, I think it's happened over a period of time, and I evolved just like Ronald Reagan evolved. I mean, Ronald Reagan was pretty liberal as a young man, and he became more and more conservative. But I feel very strongly about the Second Amendment, and I think even more so with what's happening. When you look at Paris, when you look at California, when you look at these horrible things that are happening all over the place, I mean, people need protection. We have to get protection. Second Amendment is very important. My two sons, by the way, are members of the NRA. They're expert hunters and everything else, and they feel very, very strongly what about about your Sarah Palin, Trump, 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 Trump. Why have you never Sarah voted Palin. in a presidential primary? Why have you never voted in a presidential primary? Uh, I, we don't know, that, I don't know that that's a fact. I mean, we published it, the, your voter records say you have never voted I don't know. in a presidential I, I vote a lot. I can tell you I vote a lot, but I don't know that that's a fact. Is it fair to people to agree with something you've never done? Mr. Trump, in Iowa, there are some ads on Christian radio that have been questioning Ted Cruz's authenticity as a conservative, noting, for example, that in the years where there's public data available, he hasn't given much to charity. Should that be a consideration for voters? And what is your sense of his authenticity? I don't, I don't want to speak as to his authenticity because it's not, you know, appropriate in my opinion. However, I will say that he does have problems. He's got to solve his problem as to whether or not he's actually even allowed to run for president. He was born in Canada. He was a citizen of Canada until 15, 15 months ago. I mean, he was a citizen of Canada. And then he said he didn't know that. He didn't know that he was a citizen of Canada. He was a senator from Texas, a citizen of Canada, and he said he didn't know about it. And he said he didn't know about Goldman Sachs and he didn't know about Citibank when it came to his financial disclosure. So it seems a little bit hard to believe. I, you know, as to his authenticity, I hope he's authentic. And on, on, on giving to charity, I mean, for example... Well, I mean, he should give. I would assume that he'd give nothing to charity. There, there were reports about uh, tithing when he was running for Senate. Yeah, I'd have to look. I, honestly, I'd have to look. Mr. 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 Go ahead. Lydia Lohr, Outdoor Writer, Detroit Free Press. Why should conservationists like hunters and anglers and even bird watchers and hikers vote for you? Because I'm going to keep it going. We're going to make sure, you know, if you look at the federal lands right now, they're a mess. They're an absolute mess, and I'm hearing it more and more. In fact, I'm going to ask Don to speak to it because he, being a hunter and being at, I'm a member of the NRA, but he is for a long time, and so is Eric. They tell me about the lands, and the lands are an absolute mess. Don, you want to handle that? Well, listen, we grew up as hunters. We started very young. We had a great privilege to be able to do that, and we want to continue those traditions for our kids and their kids past them. I think when I look at the outdoors, both hunting, fishing, and frankly anything else, uh, it's just kept us out of a lot of other trouble. When you see what kids can get into these days, to have a wholesome option like that is important. So keeping public lands open, making sure they're maintained, making sure they're not sold off to the highest bidder and turned private. It's a very important issue for us, and we're outdoorsmen, we do this all the time. We're not weekend warriors where we do it once every month and we talk about it at cocktail parties for the next 20 years. We do this stuff every weekend. We're out there all the time. We're out whenever we possibly can. We vacation, we live the lifestyle, we love the tradition, and we want to make sure we preserve it. So how do we continue to engage in technology and stay cutting edge and keep our kids engaged in the outdoors. Well, again, it's about getting youth into it. It's about making sure you get that next generation. I mean, a lot of the industries, especially archery, has done a phenomenal job getting women into the game, making sure that you know, mama bears into it, that way baby bears into it. And again, just keeping the great American tradition that is the outdoors alive and well. It means so much to us. And whenever I can get someone out of the woods, uh, for whatever reason it may be, and to show them something else, I've never had those people turn around and say, hey, that was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. And to make sure that those traditions are there for our kids and their kids behind them is about as important as it gets for me. Trump. Why continue hitting Jeb Bush if, as you've said, he's so low in the polls? At what point? Oh, he's terrible. He's it? terrible. But you know, only I hit him for one reason. He deserves to be hit. He takes commercials about me. He's spending millions of dollars. He's always doing commercials about me. What he should do is focus. First of all, use his last name instead of saying Jeb. Use his. Last, he's ashamed of his last name. If he weren't taking commercials, but he's spending millions and millions of dollars on commercials about me, he should focus on the other seven people that are ahead of him before he gets to me. But there That's are the other people taking, taking commercials against you, and you're not spending nearly as much not time. Not too many. Them. I mean, I don't even see anybody else. I just see Jeb, and Jeb is, look, Jeb's a loser. Does Ted Cruz deserve to be hit? He seemed to be linking President Obama's policies with PTSD. Do you think it's fair to 
blame the president for PTSD? Well, I think she frankly, I mean, you look at the problem, it's a tremendous problem of our young people coming back from the Middle East, and you have a president who's on top, and, you know, I guess everything sort of starts from the top. But I was really honored to get her endorsement yesterday. I'll tell you, it was really terrific. Okay. Mr. Thank you. 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 Thank